I hope you are fine. Well, before we continue talking and discussing experimental research design and the other types of research design, I think it is better we discuss first some components relating to research design. For example, the variables, the hypothesis, the validity, reliability, techniques of taking the sample. So, in this video, we are going to cover validity and reliability. Are you ready? Let's get it done. There are some types of validity and these terms are used in different field of study. It means in general the validity is divided into four types. Therefore our discussion is divided into three sections in which in part A, we are going to discuss the validity with different four general types. They are face validity, content validity, criterion validity, and construct validity. And in point B, we are going to discuss validity specifically dealing with experimental research design. They are internal validity and external validity and in part C or in section C we are going to cover reliability in order to understand the validity try to think this question what do you think if someone wants to test the students comprehension of tenses but the test given covers English pronunciation and then I believe you will answer this question that the researcher who conducts this research will never have a valid answer or a valid conclusion in other words this question is similar with this question does kilogram measure time does meter measure weight so when you try to comprehend this question you now start to understand what is validity well again let's discuss this question and try to bear in mind this question because in the whole discussion in this video this question will be repetitive so does group work discussion method significantly affect students understanding of tenses when you ask ask the question like this does the test administered about tenses? So it means that is phase validity. Does the test cover all aspect relating to tenses? It means that is relating to content validity. The third do the student who have good score able to use tenses? This deals with criterion validity. And the last, how the data is analyzed? This deals with construct validity. So, what is validity? A test is valid if it measures what it claims to measure. A test is valid if it measures what it claims to measure. So, in order 
to have a valid conclusion of a research, let's discuss the type of validity. The first one is phase of validity. Phase validity is a superficial and subjective assessment of whether or not your study or test measures what it is supposed to measure. For example, you want to measure students' tenses, then you give test about tenses, but you haven't considered the difficulties level of question or the content of the test and whether the test given has covered all tenses. For example, in relation to our question, does group work discussion significantly affect students' understanding of tenses? Relating to face validity, so the question, will you test the students' tenses by test relating to tenses? Yes, but you haven't realized whether the questions given to the students has covered all the tenses in English. So, this is phase validity. And the second is content validity. Content validity assesses whether a test is representative of all aspects of the construct. Content validity is how well an instrument, example a test or questionnaire, measures a theoretical construct. For example, your research deals with tenses. So, you know in English, tenses are used in the aspect of writing, speaking, listening, reading, and structure. Then, when you test the student's comprehension or understanding relating to tenses, the question is, will your test cover tenses in writing, in speaking, in listening, reading, structure, and so on. So, that is content validity. Number three is criterion validity, or in other words, this is also termed as criterion related validity. Criterion validity refers to a test correlation with a concrete outcome. For example, if the students get a good score, are they able to use the tenses in the context of language, such as speaking and writing? To understand this, suppose you have finished distributing the test and now they have their answer sheet you analyze it and then you see that the average of the score shows that the students are good in tenses or their comprehension relating to tenses are good the question are their comprehension only good in test? What about in real life situation? For example, when they are tested in speaking and writing. So that is criterion related validity. And the last type of validity that we are discussing in this 
learning video is contra construct validity. Construct validity evaluates whether a measurement tool really represents the thing we are interested in measuring. It's central to establishing the overall validity of a method. It can be verified by comparing the test to other tests that measure similar qualities to see how highly correlated the two measures are. So, construct validity focuses on the data analysis. For example, deals with our question, does group work discussion significantly affect the student's tenses comprehension? Then, to analyze the data, it can be by t-test or f-test. So it is good to prove construct validity to analyze the data by using the two statistical analysis and then you compare the result, whether they, they are similar or not. So that is meant by construct validity. Now, we discuss part B, the experimental design validity. In this case, there are two kinds of validity that we are going to cover. They are internal validity and external validity. Internal validity refers to the degree of confidence that the causal relationship being tested is trustworthy and not influenced by other factors or variables. Okay, this will be understood when we discuss the threats relating to internal validity. And here it is. Throughout confounding factors, confounding factors here are just similar with extra news variable. That is an expected factor or variable that influences the causal relationship tested in this study. Okay, so again, back to our question. Does group work discussion significantly affect students' understanding on tenses? Just suppose you have finished doing the research and then you report that group work discussion significantly affects students' understanding of tenses. Now the question is, is it merely because of group work discussion? or there are other factors for example do you know what the sample or the students who are chosen to be the sample of the study what they do out of your experiment it can be for example they have a course and in the course they learn tenses. So now the question is it because you treat them by group discussion or because they learn the tenses in a course? So that is the meaning of confounding factors. So confounding factors must be controlled by the researcher in order to get a valid result of a research. And the second threat is maturation. The passage of time influences the dependent variable. It means, you know that, say, for example, okay, out of our discussion, you conduct an experiment for a long time. So, maturation will be 
one point that should be considered by a researcher. The next is testing. You know, in experimental design, you have to do pretest and post-test with similar questions or questioners if it is about questioner. The question is, what do you think if you are given a similar test with different time? So, that will be a point which which is which should be considered by a researcher too the next threat is historical event historical event may influence the outcome of studies that occur over a period of time examples of these events might include a change in political leader or natural disaster that influences how study participants feel and act. It means, just for example, the time you conduct an experiment, then an earthquake happens. So, what do you think? Okay. Or, let's make it simple, the time you conduct the experiment, some of your samples are sick. Wow, then the result of your research will be questionable. The next is attrition. Attrition refers to participants dropping out or leaving a study, which means that the results are based on biased sample of only the people who did not choose to live and possibly who all have something in common such as higher motivation. So the question, for example, you have 30 students as the sample in experimental group. In the middle of your research or in your experimental, then some of the students leave your study. Then what do you think? It will affect the result of your study. The next threat for internal validity is Experimental bias. Experimental bias refers to an experimenter behaving in a different way with different groups in a study, which leads to an impact on the result of this study. Let's make this simple. For example, what about you have an internal problem with the sample? Hmm? Will you think that? they will follow your inst your instruction willingly i don't think so or in the other hand what about you are a boy or a guy you are handsome and unexpectedly your sample are girls and they like you it means their motivation is high to follow you in your research then this will be also questionable and the second validity relating to experimental research design that should be understood by a researcher is external validity it refers to how well the outcome of a study can be expected to apply to other settings in other words, this type of validity refers to how generalizable the findings are. Can the research be applied to the real world? Back to our discussion, the question, does 
group work discussion significantly affect the student's tenses comprehension or understanding. Say that it is or yes. Then the question does group work discussion applicable in other area or when you have different sample in the other schools? If it is yes, then the external validity is high, but if it is not, then your research finding or result is questionable. And there are some threats that a researcher should understand and should overcome these threats. They are situational factors such as the time of or the day of the research, the location, noise, researcher characteristics, and so on. Just for example, the day you do the experiment, the rain is so heavy. Will you think that rain will affect the student's concentration and so on? So, it means a researcher should consider and understand this. The next is pre and post test effects. Pre and post test effects because pre and post test are similar tests, so it may cause influence to the outcome. The next threat for external validity is selection bias. Selection bias refers to the problem of differences between groups in a study that may relate to the independent variable. So this is can be about the motivation of the sample, their willingness to take part in the study. Participant selection, that is, participants of the study differ substantially from the population. In conducting an experimental research, then a researcher should have the sample or should take the sample by applying random sample. It means some from the population are taken to be the sample. The question is, are the sample able to generalize the population? If it is not, then that will be a problem to your research result. Well, now we come to part C research reliability. Research reliability is the degree to which research method produces stable and consistent results. In other words, it is a specific measure is considered to be reliable if its application on the same object of measurement number of times produces the same results. In order to understand this, we will discuss some types of reliability. It means how to obtain a reliable data. The first one is by test and retest reliability. It relates to the measure of reliability that has been obtained by conducting the same test more than one time over a period of time with participation of the same sample group. So it means you distribute or you do the test at least twice with different times. And in the term of test and retest reliability, the 
test of the questions that you administer to the sample or to the participants are similar. The difference is the time. And the second is parallel forms reliability. Parallel forms reliability measures the correlation between two equ equivalent versions of a test. You use it when you have two different assessment tools or sets of questions designed to measure the same thing. So, back to our example of question relating to tenses. So it means you have two sets of tests, but you have to know even though you have two sets the purpose or the objective of the test are similar. They are different, but their focus is similar. For example, dealing with simple present tense, you may have some questions about simple present tense, but the level or the accuracy must be similar. The third reliability is interrater reliability. As the name indicates, relates to the measure of sets of results obtained by different assessors using same method. So normally this is very good when the data is obtained by interview. So just for example, you are being interviewed by a man will your answer be different if you are interviewed by a girl so it means if you give different answer with the same questions the only different is the interviewer then the reliability is low but if you give similar answer or exact answer, it means the reliability is high. And this is it, internal consistency reliability. This reliability is applied to assess the extent of differences within the test items that explore the same construct produce similar results. It can be represented in two main formats. They are Average inter-item correlation is a specific form of internal consistency that is obtained by applying the same construct on each item of the test. And the second is split half reliability as another type of internal consistency, reliability involves all items of a test to be split in a half. So, this means, again, you want to test the student's understanding of tenses. So, you may have number of questions for example three or five questions with one purpose just like this you want to know the student's understanding of simple present tense and then you have at least five questions relating to simple present tense then if the sample give similar answer or result to the five questions it means the reliability is high but if for example from five questions the sample only makes similar into three questions while the two are different so the reliability is low well now we come to conclusion
game. So talking about validity and reliability, simply the meaning validity, that is, the research instrument measures what is intended to measure, while reliability, that is, the degree to which scale produces consistent results when repeated measurements are made. Validity, that is about the instrument used to measure what should be measured, while reliability focuses on the consistency of the result, whether when the test is done for different uh, times, I mean, okay, where will they have similar result or consistency? While relating to instrument, a valid instrument is always reliable. On the, on, on the other hand, a reliable instrument need not to be valid instrument. That's true, because validity is the most important point in a research. So, when it is valid, it means the data is reliable. But if the data is reliable, it doesn't mean the research result is valid. Okay, related to accuracy, validity focuses on accuracy, while reliability focuses on precision. Talking about value, so, okay, validity has more than reliability. This point can be understood when we talk about the instrument in which a valid instrument is always reliable, while a reliable instrument need not to be a valid instrument. Well, our next discussion is technique or method of taking the sample. Next one, you subscribe if you haven't. Ta-ta!